All right, for this last one in the series, we factor all the denominators to start. So n plus 3 is just going to stay, n minus 4 is just going to stay. We do need to factor n squared minus n minus 12. There's no GCF. The formulas are not going to work for three terms because the signs don't match. And the leading coefficient is 1, so that means we need to use the AC method. So for AC method, F method, we need to factor negative 12. So negative 1, 12, 1, negative 12, 2, negative 6, negative 2, 6, 3, negative 4, negative 3, 4. And 4 is already in our list, so that's where we stop. We're looking for a sum that adds up to negative 1, which is 3 and negative 4. So this denominator will factor 2n plus 3n minus 4. Now we need to find the, the LCD of all the denominators. So I write n plus 3, n minus 4, n plus 3 times n minus 4. Now what cancels an n plus 3? And n plus 3. So I put that in the numerator of all these fractions. Now we ask the next fraction, what cancels an n minus 4? Well, an n minus 4. Oops. And now for the last fraction, what cancels an n plus 3? An n plus 3. What cancels an n minus 4? An n minus 4. So we can basically multiply everything by an LCD of n plus 3 times n minus 4 to get rid of all the fractions, or to clear all the fractions. So now we multiply our equation, or each term of the equation, n over n plus 3 by n plus 3 times n minus 3 plus 1 over n minus 4 n plus 3 n minus, oops, n plus 3 n minus 4. equals 6 minus 5n, n plus 3, n minus 4, times an LCD of n plus 3, n minus 4. So we do all this so that we can clear all the fractions, as I just said. So n plus 3 cancels with n plus 3, n minus 4 cancels with n minus 4, n plus 3 gone, n minus 4 gone. Now we just write down what we have left, n times n minus 4 plus uh, 1 times n plus 3 equals 6 minus 5n. Actually, that's it, since both those factors canceled out. So that's what we have left. And now the next step is to foil out or distribute if possible. So there's nothing to foil out, but we can distribute the n and the 1. So n times n would give us n squared minus 4n plus n plus 3 equals 6 minus 5n. Next step is to multiply out all the products, which we already have done, and then we combine like terms. So n squared will stay. Negative 4n plus n would give us negative 3n plus the 3 equals 6 minus 5n. Now we see what kind of equation we have. Well, we have a quadratic equation because the highest power is 2. How do we solve these? We set them equal to 0. So I can move both of these terms to the left-hand side, which would result in n squared minus 3n plus 3 plus 5n minus 6 equals 0. So now n squared stays. Negative 3n plus 5n would give us plus 2n. 3 minus 6 would give us minus 3 equals 0. And now we recognize that there's no GCF. We have three terms. The formulas are not going to work because the signs don't match. Uh, the leading coefficient is 1, so we can factor using the AC method. So we find factors of negative 3 should be a pretty short list since 3 is a prime number. So we're just left with 1 and negative 3 and negative 1 and 3. 
Well, the factors we're looking for are negative 1 and 3 because they add up to 2. So the factorization of this would be n plus 3 times n minus 1 equals 0. Now we can invoke the zero product property because we have a zero on one side and a product on the other side, which means either n plus 3 must equal 0 or n minus 1 must equal 0, which is to say n can be either negative 3 or n can be 1. Uh, oops, I guess all of this should have come further down. So that should have been done here under step six. So these are the potential solutions. And how do we know if they're solutions? We have to plug them in. So the original equation is n over n plus 3 plus 1 over n minus 4 equals 6 minus 5n over n squared minus n. Oops minus 12. So if n is equal to negative 3, that's our first potential solution, uh, we get negative 3 over negative 3 plus 3. And immediately we have to hit the pause button because negative 3 plus 3 is equal to 0. We're not allowed to divide by 0. So immediately we know n equals negative 3 will never be a solution. Now we try n equals 1. So if n is equal to 1, the equation turns into 1 over 1 plus 3, which is 4, plus 1 over 1 minus 4, which is negative 3, equals 6 minus 5 times 1, which is 5, over 1 squared, which is just 1, minus 1 minus 12. So this then becomes 1 fourth minus 1 third. This negative could just come up to the numerator. And then positive times a negative would be a negative. Equals 6 minus 5 is 1 over 1 minus 1 is 0, so those guys cancel. And then you're just left with negative 12, which is really the same as 1 fourth minus 1 third equals negative 1 over 12. This negative can just be brought to the numerator. And now this is something we can go to our machine with. So we can plug in. 1 fourth minus 1 third. It gives us negative 0 0.0833 repeating. So we can just put a bar above the 3. And on the right hand side, we have negative 1 divided by 12, which is indeed the same number, negative 0 0.083 repeating. So because we get a true statement when we plug in n equals 1, we can say that n equals 1 is the solution to our equation.